In the year 2157, humanity had extended its reach into the cosmos. The exploration vessel Odyssey, commanded by James Carson, ventured deeper into space than any other human mission. The crew of the Odyssey had been exploring the outer edges of the Milky Way when they detected an unusual signal emanating from a distant star system. The signal was unlike anything they had encountered before. Commander Carson, you might want to see this. Lieutenant Mark Harris, the ship's communication officer, called out. Carson walked over to Harris's station, peering over his shoulder at the screen. What have you got, Mark? It's a distress signal, sir. But it's not from any human source. The language is completely foreign. Carson frowned, intrigued. Can you decipher it? I'm running it through the translation algorithms now. It might take a while, Harris replied. While Harris worked on the translation, Carson gathered his senior officers in the briefing room. The room was abuzz with curiosity and anticipation. The crew of the Odyssey was a mix of seasoned astronauts and bright young scientists, all eager for discovery. All right, everyone. We've picked up a distress signal from an unknown source, Carson began. Our primary mission is exploration and peaceful contact, but if someone is in trouble, we can't just ignore it. Do we know what kind of trouble they're in? asked Dr. Emily Chen, the ship's lead xenobiologist. Not yet. Lieutenant Harris is working on deciphering the message, Carson replied. In the meantime, I want us to prepare for anything. Dr. Chen, gather your team and start getting ready for potential first contact procedures. Lieutenant Commander Lucas, ensure the ship is at full operational capacity. We need to be ready for anything. Aye, sir, responded Lucas, the ship's executive officer. The crew dispersed to their tasks, and Carson returned to the bridge where Harris was still working on the signal. After what felt like an eternity, the translation finally started to take shape. Commander, I've got it, Harris said, excitement and tension in his voice. The message is from a species called the Zorathi. They're asking for help. They're under attack by a hostile force called the Krathar. Carson's heart sank. Can you give me more details on the Krathar? Not much yet, sir, but from what I can gather, they're extremely aggressive and technologically advanced. The Zarathi are in a bad way. Carson nodded. Set a course for the source of the signal. Full speed. Aye, sir, responded Harris. The Odyssey streaked through space, its crew preparing for the unknown. As they approached the Zarathi system, the tension on the ship was palpable. Carson stood on the bridge, looking out at the stars, deep in thought. Mark, patch me through to Earth. I need to brief command on our findings, Carson said. The screen flickered to life, and soon the face of Admiral Sarah Patel appeared. Commander Carson, what's the situation? Admiral, we've intercepted a distress signal from an alien species called the Zorathi. They're under attack by another species called the Krathar. We're heading to their location now. Patel's expression was grave. Understood, Carson. You have authorization to engage if necessary. Keep us updated. Earth Command out. The transmission ended, and Carson turned to his crew. We're almost there. Stay sharp, everyone. As they dropped out of warp near the Zorathi homeworld, the sight that greeted them was grim. The planet was under siege. Fires burned on the surface, and debris from destroyed ships littered the space around it. The Odyssey's sensors lit up with the signatures of Krathar warships. Commander, we're detecting multiple Krathar vessels in orbit. They're heavily armed, reported Lieutenant Commander Lucas. Carson's jaw tightened. All hands to battle stations. Harris, open a channel to the Zorathi. The screen flickered again, and the image of a Zorathi appeared. It was a tall, slender being with elongated limbs and large, expressive eyes. The alien's face was a mixture of fear and relief. This is Commander James Carson of the human exploration vessel Odyssey. We received your distress signal. How can we assist? I am High Counselor Talon of the Zorathi. The alien replied, its voice tremulous. We are under attack by the Krathar. Our defenses are failing. Please, we need your help. Carson nodded. We'll do everything we can, Talon. Can you provide us with tactical data on the Krathar ships? We are transmitting the data now, Talon replied. The information flowed onto the Odyssey's screens, revealing the Krathar ships' strengths and weaknesses. Carson quickly formulated a plan. Lieutenant Commander Lucas, target the lead Krathar ship. Focus all firepower on their weapon systems. Let's see if we can create an opening for the Zarathai to regroup. Aye, sir, Lucas responded, relaying the orders to the weapons crew. The Odyssey surged forward, its weapons blazing. The initial volley struck the Krathar ship hard, causing it to veer off course. The Zarathi ships, seeing an opportunity, rallied and began to fight back with renewed vigor. 
Good hit, Lucas exclaimed. The Krathar's lead ship is disabled. The Zarathi are regrouping. Keep up the pressure, Carson ordered. We need to give them as much time as possible. As the battle raged on, the Odyssey and the Zorathai forces managed to turn the tide. The Krathar, taken by surprise by the humans' intervention, began to retreat. The skies over the Zorathi homeworld started to clear, and the fires on the planet's surface began to wane. Carson took a deep breath, feeling the weight of the battle lift slightly. Lieutenant Harris, open a channel to Talon. The Zorathi counselor appeared on the screen again, visibly relieved. Thank you, Commander Carson. Your intervention saved countless lives. We're just glad we could help, Carson replied. We need to discuss what happens next. The Krathar won't take this defeat lightly. Talon nodded. Indeed, we must prepare for their return, and we must learn more about each other. Perhaps together we can find a way to end this conflict. Carson agreed. We'll set up a secure communication link and begin coordinating our efforts. For now, let's focus on rebuilding and fortifying your defenses. As the Odyssey and the Zorathi began their uneasy alliance, Carson couldn't help but think about the road ahead. The Krathar were a formidable enemy, but humanity had shown they were not to be underestimated. Peaceful exploration had brought them here, but now they had to balance their quest for knowledge with the harsh realities of interstellar conflict. Carson looked out at the stars once more, knowing that this was just the beginning of a long and challenging journey. Humanity's first contact with the Zarathi had been fraught with danger, but it had also opened a new chapter in their quest to understand the universe and their place within it. As the Odyssey orbited the Zarathi homeworld, now serving as a makeshift command center, Commander James Carson convened with his senior officers and the newly allied Zarathi leadership. The atmosphere in the conference room was charged with a mix of tension and resolve. Let's get to the heart of the matter, Carson began, addressing the room. We need a comprehensive understanding of the Krathar. What are we up against? Talan, the Zarathi counselor, activated a holographic display showing various images and data points about the Krathar. The Krathar are a warrior species known for their aggression and advanced military technology. They conquer and enslave civilizations. We, the Zarathi, have been resisting their domination for decades, but our forces are dwindling. Lieutenant Mark Harris leaned forward, analyzing the data. Their ships are heavily armed, but they seem to have a vulnerability in their propulsion systems. If we can exploit this, it could give us an edge in future engagements. Dr. Emily Chen added, We need to consider not just their technology, but their biology. Understanding their weaknesses and strengths could be key to developing strategies not only for combat, but also for containment. Carson nodded, absorbing the information. Counselor Talon, can you share insights into their social structure or command hierarchy? Anything that helps us understand their decision-making. The Krathar are led by a warlord who commands absolute loyalty through fear and power. Their society values strength above all, which is why they respond to force, Talon explained. If we were to destabilize their leadership, it might cause enough confusion and dissent to halt their advances. Carson turned to his executive officer, Lieutenant Commander Lucas. Lucas, start working with Talon's team. I want a detailed plan on possible points of attack against the Krathar leadership. Aye, sir, Lucas acknowledged, his expression serious. As the meeting continued, Carson received an encrypted communication from Admiral Sarah Patel back on Earth. He excused himself and took the call in private. Commander Carson, how goes the alliance with the Zarathi? Admiral Patel asked. We're making progress, Admiral. We're pooling our resources and knowledge to form a strategic plan. There's potential for significant cooperation, but it's going to be a tough fight, Carson replied. Understood. Remember, James, the primary goal remains to safeguard humanity and our interests. While the alliance is crucial, it should not come at an untenable cost, Patel cautioned. I'm aware, Admiral. We'll proceed with caution, Carson assured her, understanding the weight of his responsibilities. Returning to the meeting, Carson relayed the need for careful strategy to his team and their new allies. We're not just fighting for the Zarathi, he declared. We're setting a precedent for how humanity handles interstellar threats and alliances. Let's make sure we do this right. With the meeting adjourned, preparations began in earnest. The Odyssey's crew worked tirelessly, collaborating with Zarathi scientists and strategists. They upgraded their systems, integrated Zarathi technology, and trained for joint operations. Meanwhile, Carson took a moment to speak with his crew, ensuring morale remained high despite the daunting challenge ahead. 
We're not just here as soldiers or explorers, he addressed them. We're ambassadors of Earth. Our actions here will echo back home and throughout the galaxy. As the Odyssey and Zarathi forces prepared, distant sensors picked up signals indicating a looming Krathar fleet, larger and more formidable than the one they had previously encountered. Looks like we're about to be tested, Carson said grimly, looking over the data with Harris. Yes, sir. But this time we're not facing them alone, Harris replied, a determined look in his eyes. Carson nodded, feeling a mix of apprehension and resolve. Let's make sure we're ready. All hands, battle stations. The crew of the Odyssey and their Zorathi allies braced themselves as the dark shadow of the Krathar fleet approached, ready to defend their newfound unity and to face the looming threat head on. The stakes were high, not just for the Zorathi, but for the future of human interaction in the galaxy. Carson knew that the coming battle would test them all, but he believed deeply in the capability and spirit of his crew. They would meet this challenge as they had met all others, together. Commander James Carson stood on the bridge of the Odyssey, watching as the dark silhouette of the Krathar fleet approached on the main screen. The tension was palpable. Each crew member was acutely aware of the impending battle. Lieutenant Harris, give me a status update on our allied forces, Carson ordered, his voice steady despite the adrenaline surging through his veins. Sir, the Zarathi fleet is in position and synced to our battle net. We've also completed integration of their shield technology on the Odyssey. It should give us a bit more resilience out there, Harris reported, his fingers flying over the control panel. Good work. And the communication line to Earth? Carson asked. Secure and constant, Commander. Admiral Patel is monitoring the situation closely, Harris replied. Just then, Lieutenant Commander Lucas joined them on the bridge, his expression serious. Commander, the crew is prepared, and all systems are at peak efficiency. We're as ready as we'll ever be. Carson nodded appreciatively, then turned to address the whole bridge. Today, we stand not just as representatives of Earth, but as defenders of our new allies. We carry with us the hopes of two civilizations. Let's make sure we're doing everything we can to protect them. As the Krathar fleet closed in, the Odyssey and its allies braced for combat. The enemy ships were imposing bristling with weaponry that had raised countless worlds. The Zarathi, having suffered under Krathar aggression for decades, were equally determined to see this threat repelled. The battle commenced with a barrage of energy blasts from the Krathar, which were met with swift counterattacks from the Allied forces. Carson oversaw the operation, issuing commands with precision. Focus fire on their lead ship. Target their weapon systems, Carson directed, pointing to the largest of the Krathar vessels on the tactical display. Lucas coordinated the ship's response, relaying Carson's commands. All units, align fire vectors. Let's punch a hole in their defenses. The Odyssey shuddered as it unleashed its full arsenal. The Zarathi ships, smaller and more agile, darted around the Krathar, harassing them and exploiting openings created by the Odyssey's heavy fire. Meanwhile, Dr. Emily Chen and her team worked feverishly in the med bay to prepare for casualties. Keep everything ready, people. Let's hope for the best, but prepare for the worst, she instructed her medical staff. Back on the bridge, Carson watched as the first Krathar ship's shields flickered and failed under the concentrated fire. Cheers erupted around him, but he remained focused. Don't let up. Keep the pressure on. Harris, what's the status of their other ships? Harris analyzed the data quickly. Two more are showing weakened shields, Commander, targeting data sent to all units. As the battle raged... Carson received a communication from Talan on the Zarathi flagship. The alien leader's voice was filled with urgency. Commander Carson, we have an opportunity. A group of Krathar ships has broken formation. We can isolate them and cut them off. Carson evaluated the tactical display. Do it, Counselor. Take Lucas with you. Execute a flanking maneuver. We'll cover your assault. Lucas nodded, promptly relaying the new orders to the Allied ships. The Zarathi fleet, with renewed vigor, peeled off to engage the isolated Krathar ships. Hours passed as the battle unfolded. The Odyssey sustained damage, but the crew's spirits remained unbroken, fueled by each small victory against the Krathar. Carson remained on the bridge, vigilant, as reports came in of weakening Krathar resistance. Finally, as the suns of the Zorathi system began to set, casting long shadows over the battlefield, the Krathar fleet started to retreat. The Allied forces, battered but unbroken, had managed to hold their ground. Carson let out a breath he hadn't realized he'd been holding. Harris, send a message to all ships. The Krathar are retreating. Maintain high alert, but stand down from battle stations. 
Excellent work today. As the crew began the process of damage assessment and repair, Carson walked over to the window and looked out at the stars, contemplating the cost of the day's victory. They had won, yes, but the war was far from over. He knew the Krathar would return, likely stronger and more cunning than before. Turning back to his crew, Carson felt a surge of pride. Together with the Zarathi, they had proven that they could stand up to one of the galaxy's most formidable foes. Prepare for repairs and casualty reports, he instructed. We need to be ready for whatever comes next. In the medbay, Dr. Chen and her team were already tending to the wounded. In the midst of the chaos, there was a sense of unity and purpose. The Odyssey and her crew were far from home, but they were not alone. With each other and their new allies, they had found strength and unity, ready to face the challenges that lay ahead. In the aftermath of their initial victory, the crew of the Odyssey and their Zarathi allies faced the monumental task of regrouping and reassessing their defenses. The Krathar had retreated, but Commander James Carson knew it was only a matter of time before they launched another attack. The war was far from over. On the bridge of the Odyssey, Carson convened with his senior officers and Zarathi representatives. The holographic table displayed the star system and the positions of their ships, all marked in vivid colors. Let's analyze the last engagement, Carson began. We need to understand the Krathar's tactics and anticipate their next move. Lieutenant Harris, what have you got? Harris cleared his throat and began. Their initial strategy relied heavily on overwhelming firepower and quick strikes. However, they didn't anticipate our combined forces or the integration of Zarathi shield technology on our ships. We've identified potential weaknesses in their flanking maneuvers, Dr. Emily Chen added. We've also noticed that after sustaining damage, their ships tend to fall back for repairs rather than pushing the attack. If we can exploit this pattern, we could potentially break their formation and isolate key ships. Commander Carson nodded thoughtfully. Good insights. We'll adjust our tactics accordingly. Prepare a detailed plan based on these observations. Harris, coordinate with the Zarathi on this. As the planning session continued, the bridge's main screen suddenly blinked with an urgent message. Commander, we're receiving a distress signal, one of the communications officers announced. It's from a nearby mining colony, Human. They're under attack by a Krathar squadron. Carson's eyes narrowed. How many ships are attacking the colony? The report states at least three Krathar ships, sir, the officer replied. We can't let that colony fall. Prepare to move out, Carson decided swiftly. Lucas, take two of our frigates and lead a rescue operation. Coordinate with Zorathy forces for additional support. Lucas acknowledged with a firm nod, his face set with determination. Understood, Commander. We'll get those colonists to safety. As Lucas and the Zorathi prepared to depart, Carson turned his attention to fortifying the main fleet and the Zorathi homeworld. The Krathar's attack on the colony was possibly a diversion, a tactic to draw them out and weaken their defenses. Meanwhile, Lucas's squadron moved quickly through space towards the beleaguered colony. The journey was tense each officer and crew member bracing for the confrontation ahead. Upon arrival, the scene was chaotic. The mining colony was ablaze with fires from the ongoing bombardment, and the defensive forces were desperately holding off the Krathar attacks. Lucas immediately engaged the enemy. All ships, focus fire on the closest Krathar cruiser. Protect the colony, he commanded over the comms. The battle was fierce. The Krathar ships were relentless, but Lucas's tactical acumen and the agility of the Zarathi fighters began to turn the tide. They managed to destroy one Krathar cruiser and damage another, forcing it to retreat. Back on the Odyssey, Carson monitored the engagement closely while maintaining his preparations against a larger Krathar offensive. The defense of the colony was crucial, but so was safeguarding their strategic position. After hours of intense fighting, Lucas's team successfully repelled the Krathar forces from the colony. The colonists were safe, for now. Cheers broke out among the crew of the Odyssey when Lucas reported the victory. Good work, Lucas. Return to formation. We need to stay vigilant, Carson instructed, relief in his voice mingled with the ever-present concern for the next Krathar move. Upon Lucas's return, the Odyssey and its allies began a comprehensive review of their defenses and strategies. The victory at the colony had been a morale booster, but the war was escalating. Carson met with his officers and Zarathi counterparts to discuss their next steps. We've shown we can defend ourselves and protect others. Now, we need to consider a counteroffensive. If we keep reacting, we'll only see more casualties, Carson proposed. The room was filled with nods of agreement. 
Plans began to take shape for a more aggressive stance against the Krathar, aiming to push them back and prevent further attacks on civilian targets. As they strategized, Carson felt a deep responsibility weighing on him. Every decision he made affected not just his crew, but countless others across the galaxy. He was determined to lead them with honor and courage, driven by the belief that their cause was just and their actions could bring about a lasting peace. But first, they had to survive, and that meant preparing for the hard battles yet to come. Following their successful defense of the human mining colony, Commander James Carson recognized the need to strengthen their position by forming alliances with other alien species that had also suffered under the Krathar's tyranny. The war was not just a series of battles, it was a chess game requiring strategic alliances and tactical foresight. Carson convened a meeting with his senior officers and Zorathi leaders aboard the Odyssey. The bridge had been transformed into a diplomatic chamber, with representatives from various alien races gathered around the holographic table. As we stand, our victory at the mining colony was a significant blow to the Krathar, but it's not enough to deter them permanently. We need allies, Carson stated, addressing the assembly. Talan, the Zarathi counselor, nodded in agreement. Our intelligence suggests there are at least three other civilizations within this sector that have been resisting Krathar incursions. They might be willing to join our cause. Carson turned to Lieutenant Harris. Mark, establish communications with these civilizations. Express our intent to form a united front against the Krathar. It's imperative we present ourselves as equals and reliable partners. Yes, sir, Harris responded, proceeding to send out diplomatic communiques. As they awaited responses, Dr. Emily Chen expressed her concerns about the potential challenges of integrating different alien technologies and medical practices. We'll need to ensure our medical teams are prepared to handle a variety of biological needs. This alliance isn't just military, it's a commitment to support each other's well-being. Carson appreciated her insight. Make it your priority, Emily. Prepare our teams to be as adaptable as possible. Over the next few days, delegations from the Tarnix, a reptilian race skilled in guerrilla warfare, and the Elite, known for their advanced electronic warfare capabilities, arrived on the Odyssey. Each group was wary, but acknowledged the common threat posed by the Krathar. During the initial negotiations, tensions ran high. Each species had its own experiences and grievances with the Krathar, and trust was hard to come by. Carson worked diligently to mediate the discussions, emphasizing common goals over past conflicts. Ladies and gentlemen and distinguished beings of all species, Carson began in one of the sessions, our shared enemy does not discriminate. They see us all as targets. Alone, we might resist them temporarily, but together we can end their reign of terror. His words slowly began to resonate with the group. Stories of Krethar atrocities were shared, as were tales of resistance and resilience. A shared strategy began to take shape, focusing on a coordinated strike against a major Krathar supply line, which would disrupt their operations in several sectors. Lucas, who had been promoted to commander for his leadership in the field, was put in charge of the combined task force. We have an opportunity to strike a significant blow, but coordination will be key. We'll need to train together to operate seamlessly. Training exercises commenced, with each species learning from the others. The Tarnix brought their stealth tactics into play, teaching the human and Zarathi forces how to move undetected through enemy territory. The Elite, meanwhile, provided electronic countermeasures to shield the Allied fleet from Krathar sensors. Throughout these preparations, Carson kept a close line of communication open with Earth Command. Admiral Patel monitored the Alliance's progress, providing strategic insights and additional resources. Commander Carson, the UEG is fully supportive of your efforts. We are sending additional supplies and weaponry to aid your coalition, Patel informed him during a secure transmission. Thank you, Admiral. Your support is invaluable, Carson replied, knowing the real test of their alliance lay ahead. As the coalition's plan took shape, a sense of unity began to build. Formerly disparate groups now worked as one their crews mingling, sharing meals, and exchanging stories. This camaraderie was the foundation upon which their battle plan was built. Finally, the day arrived to launch their offensive. The Allied fleet, a mix of human, Zorathi, Tarnix, and Elite ships, moved into position. Carson addressed the fleet, his voice broadcast across every ship. Today we make our stand, not just as separate races fighting for survival, but as a united front determined to secure a future, free from tyranny. Let's show the Krathar that while they may have brought us together through conflict, 
It is our shared desire for peace that makes us strong. With that, the Allied fleet surged forward, ready to engage the enemy in what would be their first coordinated strike against the Krathar Empire. The stakes were high, but so was their resolve. The galaxy watched, and history waited to record the outcome of this monumental endeavor. The combined fleet's first coordinated strike against the Krathar supply line had been a resounding success, disrupting their operations and giving the Allies a much-needed boost in morale. However, Commander James Carson knew that their victory, while significant, was just the beginning. To turn the tide of the war, they needed to strike at the heart of the Krathar Empire. In a secure briefing room aboard the Odyssey, Carson, Lieutenant Commander Lucas, and representatives from the Zarathi, Tarnix, and Elidi gathered to discuss their next move. The holographic table displayed a detailed map of the Krathar homeworld, Braxor. Our intelligence suggests that Vraxor is not only their homeworld, but also the nerve center of their military operations, Talon explained, pointing to key installations on the map. If we can infiltrate and disable their command and control infrastructure, we could cripple their ability to wage war. Lucas, ever the strategist, nodded thoughtfully. A direct assault on Vraxor would be suicidal. Their defenses are too strong. But a small, elite team could potentially infiltrate their command center and cause significant damage from within. Carson turned to his assembled team. This mission will be dangerous, but it's our best shot at ending this war. We'll need the best of the best for this operation. The room fell silent as the gravity of the mission sank in. Carson then turned to Talon. You know their tactics and their world better than anyone. Will you join us? Talon didn't hesitate. I will. The future of my people depends on it. The infiltration team was carefully selected. Carson would lead, accompanied by Talon, Lucas, and a hand-picked group of specialists from the Allied forces. Each member brought unique skills to the table, from stealth and combat expertise to hacking and sabotage. In the days leading up to the mission, the team underwent rigorous training, rehearsing their plan down to the smallest detail. Dr. Emily Chen provided them with medical support and briefed them on possible biological hazards they might encounter. The night before the mission, Carson gathered his team for a final briefing. We've trained hard for this. Each of you knows your role. Remember, our objective is to disable their command and control. Stay focused, stay together, and we will get through this. The team boarded a specially modified shuttle, designed to evade Krathar detection. As they approached Vraxor, the tension in the shuttle was palpable. The planet loomed large, a foreboding presence against the backdrop of space. Lucas piloted the shuttle with expert precision, navigating through the planet's defenses and landing in a remote area outside the main command complex. We're in, he announced. From here on, it's all about stealth. The team disembarked, moving swiftly and silently through the rugged terrain. Talon led the way, using her knowledge of Krathar patrol patterns to avoid detection. They reached the perimeter of the command complex without incident. Time to go dark, Carson whispered, activating his cloaking device. The rest of the team followed suit, their forms blending into the surroundings. They bypassed several security checkpoints, using a combination of Zorathi technology and Elidi hacking skills to disable alarms and surveillance systems. Inside the complex, the tension grew. The corridors were dimly lit and eerily quiet, the oppressive atmosphere weighing on them. Their first major hurdle came when they encountered a heavily guarded control room. Talon and Lucas worked together to devise a plan. We can create a diversion, Lucas suggested. A small explosion in the adjacent wing will draw the guards away long enough for us to slip in. Do it, Carson ordered. Lucas set the charges, and moments later, a distant boom echoed through the complex. The guards rushed towards the sound, leaving the control room unprotected. The team moved in swiftly, neutralizing the remaining Krathar operators and securing the room. Accessing their systems now, Talon said, her fingers flying over the controls. We need to disable their communications and power grid. As Talon worked, the rest of the team held their positions, alert for any signs of trouble. Minutes felt like hours as they waited, the tension almost unbearable. Done, Talon finally announced. Their communications are down, and I've initiated a shutdown of their power grid. This should buy us enough time to escape. Let's move, Carson commanded, leading the team back through the complex. Their exfiltration was not without challenges. The Krathar quickly realized something was amiss and began a frantic search for the intruders. The team had to navigate through intense security sweeps 
relying on their training and Talon's guidance to avoid capture. As they neared the shuttle, alarms blared throughout the complex. The Krathar were closing in. We've got to move now, Lucas urged. They sprinted the last few meters, boarding the shuttle just as Krathar soldiers emerged from the shadows, weapons blazing. Lucas lifted off, dodging enemy fire and racing towards the upper atmosphere. Hang on, he shouted, pushing the shuttle to its limits. They broke through the planet's defenses and into the safety of space, setting a course back to the Allied fleet. On the Odyssey, the bridge erupted in cheers as the shuttle docked. The mission had been a success, but Carson's expression was somber. He knew the war was far from over, but this strike had dealt a significant blow to the Krathar's ability to coordinate their forces. Back in the briefing room, Carson addressed his weary team. You all perform brilliantly. This mission will go down in history as a turning point in our fight against the Krathar. Rest now, because our work is far from done. As the team disbanded to get some much-needed rest, Carson allowed himself a moment of quiet reflection. They had struck at the heart of their enemy, proving that the combined strength of their alliance could achieve the impossible. The path to victory was still fraught with danger, but they had taken a significant step towards a future free from Krathar tyranny. The successful infiltration of Vraxor had disrupted the Krathar's command and control, creating chaos within their ranks. With their leadership destabilized, the Allied forces saw an opportunity to strike a decisive blow. Commander James Carson knew this was their moment to turn the tide of the war. In the war room of the Odyssey, Carson, Lieutenant Commander Lucas, Talan, and representatives from the Tarnix and Elidi gathered around the holographic display. The map showed various Krathar strongholds, now vulnerable due to the disruption caused by the infiltration mission. We've created a significant power vacuum, Carson began. The Krathar are scrambling to regain control. We need to capitalize on this chaos and launch a coordinated offensive against their key installations. Lucas nodded, his eyes scanning the map. I suggest we focus on their shipyards and supply depots. If we can cripple their ability to build and sustain their fleet, we can significantly weaken their military capabilities. Talon added, Our intelligence indicates that their shipyards on the planets Garvos and Rathar are critical to their operations. A strike on these locations would be devastating. The Tarnix representative, General Kor, spoke up. Our forces excel in guerrilla tactics. We can lead diversionary attacks to draw their defenses away from the primary targets. And our electronic warfare capabilities can ensure their communications remain disrupted, said Vera the Elidi strategist. Carson's plan began to take shape. We'll divide our forces. Lucas, you'll lead the assault on Garvos. Talon and I will take Rathar. General Kor, your teams will conduct diversionary raids. Vera, keep their communications in disarray. The room buzzed with activity as everyone prepared for the upcoming offensive. The sense of urgency and determination was palpable. They were on the brink of a significant turning point in the war. As the fleets assembled and prepared for the coordinated strike, Carson took a moment to address his crew and the Allied forces via the ship's communication system. Today we stand united against a common enemy. The Krathar have brought suffering and destruction to countless worlds, but together we have the power to stop them. This offensive is our chance to cripple their war machine and pave the way for peace. Stay focused, stay strong, and fight with everything you have, for our homes, our allies, and our future. The Allied fleet launched into hyperspace, splitting into designated groups for the assault on Garvos and Rathar. As Carson's group approached Rathar, the tension on the bridge was intense. All ships, prepare for battle, Carson commanded. Our target is the main shipyard. Disable their defenses and destroy their production facilities. The Krathar, though disorganized, quickly mobilized their forces to defend Rathar. The battle began with a furious exchange of fire. The Odyssey's advanced shield technology, combined with the Zarathi enhancements, allowed them to withstand the initial onslaught. Focus fire on their anti-aircraft batteries, Lucas ordered, coordinating the fleet's attacks. Talon and her team infiltrated the surface, targeting the power generators that fueled the shipyard's defenses. As explosions rocked the facility, the Allied forces pressed their advantage. Generators are down, Talon reported, proceeding to the main production line. Carson's tactical acumen shone through as he maneuvered the fleet, exploiting weaknesses in the Krathar's disorganized defenses. The coordinated strikes from the Tarnix and Elidi further sowed confusion among the enemy ranks. Meanwhile, Lucas's assault on Garvos met fierce resistance, 
but his strategic brilliance and the unyielding spirit of his forces began to turn the tide. They disabled the shipyard's production capabilities, leaving the Krathar fleet crippled. As the battle on Rathar reached its climax, Talon's team planted charges throughout the main production line. Charges set, evacuating now, she reported. All units, prepare for final assault, Carson commanded. Destroy the shipyard. With a coordinated barrage, the Allied fleet unleashed a devastating attack on the shipyard. The facility erupted in flames, and debris scattered across the planet's surface. The Krathar forces, now in disarray, retreated, their morale shattered. Back on the Odyssey, cheers erupted as the shipyard exploded, signaling a decisive victory. Carson allowed himself a moment of relief, but knew the war was far from over. Well done, everyone, Carson said over the comms. This victory is a testament to our unity and determination. We've dealt a significant blow to the Krathar, but we must remain vigilant. The fight continues. As the Allied fleet regrouped and assessed the damage, Carson convened a meeting with his senior officers and allies. The holographic display showed the aftermath of the battles, with key Krathar installations now destroyed. This offensive has turned the tide, Carson stated. The Krathar are on the defensive. We need to press our advantage and continue our coordinated strikes. Lucas, Talon, and the other leaders agreed. Plans were quickly made for the next series of attacks, focusing on dismantling the remaining Krathar strongholds. As the meeting concluded, Carson looked around at the diverse group of beings who had come together to fight a common enemy. Despite their differences, they had forged a powerful alliance, one that could bring lasting peace to the galaxy. Walking back to his quarters, Carson felt a renewed sense of purpose. The war was far from over, but they were making progress. Each victory brought them closer to their ultimate goal, a future where all species could coexist in peace and security. For now, though, they had to stay vigilant, continue fighting, and build on the momentum they had gained. The Krathar had underestimated the strength of unity, and Carson was determined to show them just how powerful that unity could be. The war against the Krathar had reached its climax. Following a series of tactical victories and relentless pressure from the Allied forces, the Krathar were now cornered, their forces scattered across their remaining strongholds. Commander James Carson and his diverse coalition stood on the brink of a decisive confrontation, one that would determine the future of the galaxy. Aboard the Odyssey, Carson reviewed the battle plans with his senior officers and allied leaders. The final target was Vraxor, the Krathar homeworld, now vulnerable after the repeated blows dealt to its military infrastructure. We've pushed them back to their last bastion, Carson addressed the room, his voice resolute. This won't be easy. Vraxor is heavily fortified, and they will be desperate. But we have momentum, and more importantly, we have unity. Let's finish this, once and for all. The Allied fleet assembled for the final assault, a massive armada that dwarfed any force assembled during the war. Every ship and every soldier knew the weight of what was to come. The air was thick with determination and a palpable sense of impending finality. Lucas, now promoted to admiral for his outstanding leadership, coordinated the fleet's formation. All ships maintain tight formation. Focus on disabling their orbital defenses first. We clear a path for the ground forces. As the fleet approached Vraxor, the Krathar unleashed a fierce barrage of fire, determined to defend their home at all costs. The sky above Vraxor lit up with the explosions of starfighters and defense satellites. Talon, leading one of the main assault groups, communicated with Carson. We're encountering heavy resistance. Their defensive grid is unlike anything we've faced before. Keep pressing forward, Carson replied. We'll cover your advance. Lucas, deploy our fighters to assist Talon's group. The battle raged fiercely, with every inch of space around Vraxor contested brutally. The Odyssey spearheaded the assault, its cannons blazing as it shattered the Krathar's defensive lines. Meanwhile, ground forces prepared for deployment, ready to seize control of the planet's surface. Carson took a moment amidst the chaos to look out at the battlefield. Ships from a dozen different worlds fought side by side, united by a common cause. It was a testament to what they had built together, a true alliance, not of convenience, but of shared destiny. Finally, the orbital defenses began to falter. Ground teams, you are clear for deployment, Carson ordered. Secure key objectives and dismantle their command structure. The ground forces, including elite units from the Tarnix and Elite, descended upon Vraxor. The Krathar, caught between the orbital assault and the ground invasion, began to retreat. Amidst the turmoil, Carson led a squad to the Planetary Command Center, a massive fortress that housed the Krathar's War Council. 
As they breached the command center, Carson confronted the Krathar warlord, a towering figure clad in battle armor. You have lost, Carson declared, his weapon aimed at the warlord. Surrender and end this bloodshed. The warlord glared, his eyes burning with defiance, but also with the realization of his inevitable defeat. Your coalition will not last, he sneered. Others will rise to challenge you. Perhaps, Carson acknowledged. But today, we stand together. And today, you have been defeated not by our weapons, but by our unity. With a reluctant nod, the warlord deactivated his weapon and surrendered. Around them, the sounds of battle faded as the Krathar forces, leaderless and overwhelmed, ceased their resistance. The war was over. Back on the Odyssey, the crew and their allies celebrated their hard-won victory. But for Carson, the end of the war was just the beginning of another challenge, ensuring the peace they had fought so hard for. We've achieved something remarkable, Carson addressed his crew and allies. We've shown that unity can overcome tyranny, diversity can defeat uniformity. Now, we must work to maintain this peace, to ensure that the sacrifices made were not in vain. As the celebrations continued, Carson stepped away to gaze at the stars. Peace would require vigilance, but for now, he allowed himself a moment of quiet satisfaction. The galaxy was forever changed, and he had played a part in shaping its future. The Odyssey, once a symbol of humanity's exploratory spirit, had become a beacon of unity. Under the stars, Carson felt a profound connection to all those who had stood together against the darkness. Today, they had turned the tide of war. Tomorrow, they would build a lasting peace.